Welcome along to another how-to video from Saturn Alliance. This is the third video in our series of installing Small Business Server. In the previous version we installed the standard components of Small Business Server. This video will cover the installation of the premium components being Microsoft ISA Server and SQL Server. If you only plan to install Small Business Server standard, then you can skip this video and move on to the next one in our series. At the completion of our last video, we ended up with the machine rebooted and the to-do list being displayed. We're not yet ready to install and configure our Small Business Server any further until we've installed the premium software components. So the first thing we need to do is cancel the to-do list, install the first premium CD into our small business server and allow it to load the following menu. From here we can see our option to install Microsoft SQL Server as well as ISA Server. The first thing I'll choose here is to install SQL Server 2005 by simply clicking on the option. The installation now commences. I accept the terms and conditions and push the next button to continue. Prior to the installation of SQL Server 2005, a number of components will need to be installed on the Small Business Server. As you can see, these include the .NET Framework 2, Native Client and some setup and support files. To have these installed, simply click the Install button to continue. These components will be automatically installed and configured on your small business server and when complete you'll be taken to the next step in the process. When this is complete I press next to continue. It should now be presented with the following window. Simply click next to continue. The system configuration check will run to ensure that all the components required are installed, all the resources are correct, take any action that's appropriate, but normally should end up with all green arrows. So again, click the next, click the next button to continue and the preparation installation wizard will commence. You next need to enter your name and company details. These are normally filled in from the SBS information filled in previously. Simply click next to continue. Here you can choose any additional components that you wish installed as well as the location into which you want to install SQL Server. In our case we only have a C drive so that's where we're going to install it. However, we would recommend that you choose to install all the management tools. This will allow you to easily configure your SQL server, especially for memory usage, once it has been installed. Once your selections are complete, simply hit the next button to continue. Select the instance that you want to install it. Normally you'll leave it as the default instance. Here you can customise the login account details for each and every system account in SQL, but just for ease of use, we're going to set it to be the local system. Normally you should set up a unique service account for which SQL will log in as. This is considered best practice, but for convenience in this case, we'll simply select local system and hit next to continue. Normally we would leave this set as Windows Authentication Mode so that it links in with our Active Directory. Hit next to continue. Again leave these options as they are. Hit next to continue again. You can choose whether you want to send any error information directly to Microsoft. Again normally you would leave these as they are and hit next. 
you are now ready to install SQL once again. Simply hit install and the process will commence. You'll next be prompted to insert the second premium disk to continue with the installation of SQL. Once you've inserted this disk, simply press OK to continue the installation. Then complete, press the next button to continue. And finally, the finish button to complete the process. Best practice probably is to reboot the small business server after the completion of the installation of SQL just to make sure everything is working and you free up any memory after the install. Once that is complete, reinsert disk 1 from the premium disk CDs and select the option to install Microsoft Internet Security and Acceleration Server 2000. Click next to commence the process of installation, accept the terms and conditions, select a location where you want to install, again if you have alternate drives simply change the option here, otherwise continue with next and finally finish to commence the installation of ISA 2004. When ISA has completed installing, it will want to run the Configure Email and Internet Connect wizard. We'll select to cancel that at this point in time because we will run it at a later stage when we have completed our installation. So for the time being, simply press cancel. The installation process for ISA will continue you'll see that it is now installing a service pack for the MSD engine into which ISA stores all its data. The installation of ISA is now complete. Simply click the close button to finish. You're reminded that to complete the installation process for ISA you will need to reboot the small business server. Again, simply select OK to commence that reboot process. Upon completion of a reboot and a login to your system, you're presented with the server management. This concludes our video on the installation of SQL Server and ISA Server on Small Business Server. Please keep tuned for future videos that will continue the installation process of Small Business Server 2003 R2. This video has been brought to you by Saturn Alliance. If you have any questions, please email me robert at satinalliance.com.au. Thank you very much for watching.